Welcome to the Dance to 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. In this guide, we'll cover all of your skills as you train to Tango Flamenco, Don Quixote, Do Flamingo better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this. to this. This series is framed in the mindset of players completely new to Final Fantasy XIV or the MMO genre in general, or generally just still inexperienced. In that same vein, this will merely be an overview of the actions and how to use them. Optimal rotations are better left to their own in-depth videos just due to how much complexity is involved in perfect openers and overall rotations. This is not meant to be a purely optimal guide. If you wish to be optimal at level cap, there are further places you can research your job on. We will, however, be crafting rotations as we go to help new players understand what goes through creating openers and give them a foothold to push themselves into being able to do it on their own. The goal is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. All tooltips will be shown at the level cap for each section. Level 60 for how we begin, level 70 for Stormblood stuff, level 80 for Shadowbringers levels, and level 90 for Endwalker. I also recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the general tab of your actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 90. Just put your skills on your hotbars in a way you feel comfortable using as you are leveling. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on how I set up my UI, check the description or the card in the corner for a video on it. And keep the following in mind, patches can change jobs still. Be sure to check the description for any patch notes for minor potency changes, or skill changes, or any other special notes. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Dancer is almost entirely proc and priority based DPS, procs being one skill activating another. Your basic combo procs better combo hits randomly. Those better combos can give you resources to spend. Those resource spenders can proc an advanced version of itself that doesn't cost a resource. That's three different procs for four different layers, and there are so many procs it may even be recommended you mess with your UI to put procs into their own category and made bigger. And while it sounds complex, it's arguably the easiest job in the game to get into. Once you pass the initial learning curve, you'll find yourself a low personal damage job with very high party support. Solo, you'll find yourself doing pretty weak damage, but in a party setting, that is more than made up for with how much you support your allies. You may not realize you have low damage though, being made up for with very flashy, very high damage skills on cooldown. To obtain the dancer job, you must complete your level 10 class quest and be level 60. That's it! Aside from owning the Shadowbringers expansion, that is. With this done, head to the Limsa Lominsa Aetherite Plaza and head south. First blue quest will be the dancer job. Let's get into the finer details of each skill. Dancer starts all the way at level 60, which is a lot of our toolkit to begin with. First is our roll actions. This is a mixed bag of skills, some way more useful than others, but they're otherwise worth putting on your bars. Make room for these and see about where you can use them. There's a video in the corner and in the description for a video about these skills specifically. I recommend checking them out because I'm not going over them here. Level 50 and 60, increased action damage and increased action damage too. These increase your base damage by 10% and 20% respectively. Given you start at level 60, you won't notice anything until you sink below these levels. And even then, your gear will be the real reason you notice any damage levels. Level 1, 2, 20, and 40, Cascade, Fountain, Reverse Cascade, and Fountain Fall. These are all paired together because they're functionally part of a single combo. Cascade does 220 potency of damage to an enemy. Comboing into Fountain, that does a 280 potency hit. Both skills also have a 50% chance to get a proc. Cascade can proc Silken Symmetry, and Fountain can proc Silken Flow. These activate Reverse Cascade and Fountain Fall respectively. Reverse Cascade has a 280 potency hit, same as Fountain. Fountain Fall is a 340 potency to an enemy. They're much stronger attacking options. These procs last for 30 seconds, so you don't need to use these skills immediately. However, you will want to use them before using Cascade or Fountain again, depending on the proc. If you have Silken Symmetry and use Cascade, you can get Silken Symmetry again. It will end up overriding the first proc and lose you an entire use. And because these are stronger, you don't want to waste your procs. Plus, they have a further proc we'll talk about in a moment. 
Because of how these work, it essentially is a two-way combo that you can store. As long as you aren't swapping to your main AoE combo, a whole two buttons as well, nothing will break these combos. Combos have a 30 second time limit to execute them across the board, but the only buttons that break the main combo of Cascade into Fountain is your main combo AoE GCDs, and again there's only two of those. So there's a lot of leeway of when you can continue to hit your combos. But again, prioritize them when you can, because they're just outright stronger. You get higher damage and a 50% chance at a fourfold feather. These are useful for our next skill. Level 30, Fourfold Mastery and Fan Dance. This introduces our first gauge, Fourfold Feathers. Anytime Reverse Cascade or Fountainfall gives a feather, it goes here. With an instant 1 second cooldown, Fan Dance costs a single Fourfold Feather to do a 150 potency hit to a target. This is why you want to use your Silken procs as much as you can, a 50% chance for an extra 150 potency every single time. And you can store up to 4 feathers for burst phases or other such tactics. But other than tactics like that, this is just a bit of extra damage for you to weave in. Throw out feathers when you can. While Dancer is the lowest personal DPS, lowest doesn't mean low or none. You still do plenty, and as you level up you get extra benefits to using your feathers, so get used to spending them sooner than later. Level 15, 25, 35, 45, and 50. Windmill, Blade Shower, Rising Windmill, Blood Shower, and Fan Dance 2. That was a lot of skills, but these work exactly the same as your single target skills. But these are AoE, Area of Effect skills. All of them have a 5 yom radius around yourself. This makes you even more a melee job than all jobs already are. Yes, you want to be near the enemies, not far away. Windmill into Blade Shower is your main combo. This is 100 potency into 140 potency AoEs. The procs they give are... Silken Symmetry and Silken Flow, respectively. These are the same procs as your single target skills. If you use Windmill and get Silken Symmetry, you can spend that on Reverse Cascade, and the reverse is true. So if the need arises, you can easily swap back and forth between single target and AoE. Back to Rising Windmill and Blood Shower, these are 140 potency and 180 potency, respectively. Significantly stronger than the base combo when procs are available. And these skills have a 50% chance at fourfold feathers, just like your single target. However, we instead use these on Fan Dance 2. Still a 5 yom AoE around yourself costing one feather. This is an extra 100 potency AoE you can weave in between attacks. This is another reason why you may end up holding some feathers for later on. AoE is a mix of being stronger than single target on as few as two enemies or three enemies. Three enemies is the safe spot for always being stronger than single target, but the math can come out in favor of starting at two, but point is, if there are multiple enemies, especially if there are a lot of enemies, Start using AoE. Same rules apply. Spend your procs as you get them, spend feathers for extra damage, and keep pushing out damage. The only way to drop your AoE combo, Windmill into Blade Shower, is to either wait 30 seconds or press either Cascade or Fountain. So no matter which set of skills you're using, the playstyle remains relatively the same. Level 60, Closed Position. Dancer is a support job with both party-wide and single-player buffing opportunities. Close position is how you choose the player for your single-target buffing abilities. This designates a dance partner which shares the effects of four different abilities with the player. We'll be going over two of them now, and two more as we go through skills beyond level 60. For now, at the start of every duty, we're going to choose a dance partner. In dungeons, it will always be your co-DPS who is your partner but in 8 player parties you have 3 or 4 other DPS to partner, which means you need some general ordering, and if there are multiple dancers you can partner each other if there are no other choices like in dungeons. And in 8 player parties, partner different people. You can't stack all the buffs on one person. When you can't rely on a friend to partner, or you see someone you know for sure is a skilled player, you have to just randomly choose. 
For better results, we can instead follow a priority. This priority system can change wildly through the expansion, small or large tweaks, with more than one job already being announced to be getting some massive changes mid-expansion. So take this chart with a pound of salt. This is based purely on job choice, skill, gear, and overall party composition are not being taken into account. Each tier is to be read left to right, so jobs within a tier are not entirely equal. But again, this can be incorrect due to many reasons. Mid-battle, if you take a look at the aggro in the party list, you can estimate if you made a good choice. Other than the tanks, does your dance partner have the highest aggro level? If they don't, consider swapping dance partner to the person who is. High aggro usually means high damage output. Just don't remove dance partner and have no dance partner running. A bad dance partner is better than none. So let's look at two skills that help your dance partner. Level 15, Standard Step. On a 30 second cooldown, this involves our second UI element and is a whole system in itself. First upon hitting Standard Step, you will be put through a 1.5 second global cooldown. This also changes your gauge into a pair of colored symbols. Then, both your single target and AoE skills will also have changed into other skills. These were named in the tooltips of all those skills. Those are the Red Rose, Ember White, Blue Dove, Entrache, Green Leaf, Jete, Yellow Crown, Pirouette. There are colorblind modes in this game, and I would recommend trying it out if you have trouble getting used to it but otherwise you can rely on the symbols rather than the colors. One will also be lit up with the combo border, showing you which buttons you need to hit in order. Each one has a very short one second global cooldown when you hit them. Standard Step is basically a game of Simon Says, that you have 15 seconds to execute. You look at the gauge when you start dancing, then match the symbols from left to right. Green Blue, Jete, then Entrache. And again, they will light up when you need to hit them, Jet will be lit up, hit it, Entrache will light up. Even if you hit the wrong symbols, the only penalty given is delaying you. It takes longer to finish your dance. The only requirement is to hit the listed dance moves in order. How many incorrect moves are between them does not matter, so long as you hit the right moves. And it will always be two different symbols, never two of the same. And just because the penalty is low doesn't mean you want to intentionally do the wrong moves. After hitting the symbols, you will hit Standard Step again. It is lit up and is now Standard Finish. This is a 1.5 second global cooldown that does a massive AoE 15 yams in range. The effects of this get stronger based on how many correct steps you took during the dance, which you should almost always aim for two steps. Zero and one correct steps is basically pointless. The first effect is damage. A successful dance will do 720 potency to the first enemy within range, and 180 potency to all enemies beyond the first. That is as strong as a blood shower, plus the extra damage on one target, which isn't all that great. In both boss fights and in AoE, you essentially want to use this on cooldown because of these damage values though. The second effect is a big one. You and your dance partner will be given a 5% damage up buff for 60 seconds. And because Standard Step is only a 30 second cooldown, you essentially have a permanent 5% damage up. In high end rating, you can even buff yourself and your partner before a fight starts. 5% is low on its own, but the fact that it is essentially a permanent buff adds up very quickly. This alone is enough for you to be 100% sure you have someone partnered in all duties 60 or higher big damage and bigger damage for you and your ally. To sum it all up from there, hit standard step, hit glowing step buttons in order based on the step gauge, hit standard finish. Just be careful of where exactly you are positioned when you use it. 15 yams is a very big AoE, so you could hit enemies you had no intention to hit. I'm thinking arm veil first room by the way. Level 52, Curing Waltz. On a 60 second cooldown, this does a short range AoE heal around you and your dance partner, 3 yams in range. This heals you both and anyone within range. This can include each other. Assuming a tight stack, this can be a 600 potency heal to everyone hit by it. This furthers your reasons to stand in melee range as much as you can. 
It's such a short range heal, anywhere else it won't help anyone but yourself. This isn't a heal to sleep on either. At level 90, this is about an 8% heal to myself, 16% if you also get hit by your dance partner's heal as well. This is significant, and free since you can weave it between attacks. You can help the healer out after the boss does some form of raid-wide damage, or try and specifically aim to hit the tank since they are taking far more damage than anyone else. This is a tactic you can even use in trash pulls. Carefully make your way over to the tank between doing AoE attacks and hit curing waltz to help the healer out a little. Just be careful you don't stand in enemy AoEs and end up getting yourself killed. Many healers will incorrectly swap to heal you if you take damage, despite the trash mobs currently murdering the tank. But done right, it is a helpful option. Level 56, Shield Samba. While not affected by Dan's partner, on a 2 minute cooldown this reduces the damage of all allies within a 20 arm range by 10%. This buff lasts for 15 seconds and cannot stack with the bard or machinist versions of this skill. This is similar to Curing Waltz and what we just covered, using it on just the tank in trash pools. This is an underutilized strategy in dungeons, since there's the motto, trash is more dangerous than bosses. Sure, you're only helping the tank stay alive, but that's all you need in trash fights. 10% less damage means the healer has an easier time keeping them going. Otherwise for bosses, this is made to defend against raid-wide damage. If everyone in the party is going to take a lot of damage due to mechanics or just plain raid-wides, hit Shield Samba to help people survive. If there are multiple instances of damage in a row, you're giving the healer a bit more leeway with healing between them, be it surviving without a heal or not needing as much healing. Don't hold onto your support for no reason. These are very useful for survival and just generally helpful. It doesn't need to be the difference between life and death to be of help. Level 50, An Avant. This does a quick 10 yom dash in the direction your character is facing, with a 30 second cooldown. This isn't insanely useful, but it does have some important benefits. If you're slow to dodge an AoE, you can hit An Avant to dodge. Just be aware of the direction you are facing, so you don't dash into more AoEs. Another option is for keeping up with the party. I mean, you have Sprint and should be using Sprint, but also Peloton if it's not mid-combat. But if you are still for some reason falling behind the rest of the party and the tank, an Avant is a quick dash to catch up a little bit. It's not the quickest dodge in the world, and you are completely locked into the animation once begun, but it's a little bit of extra movement when you need it. But given you're a ranged DPS, you already have tons of movement for getting in and out of melee range. And that is our starting toolkit. It's not very expansive, very, very simple. If you understand the idea behind your procs and how to do your dance, with a dance partner chosen, then you know basically how Dancer is up to level 90. Though there's always more specifics that can be gone over. This includes openers, which at 60, you don't really have one. At most, you pre-pull prepare your dance, and that's it. This is our opener. You stand a step on cooldown and just hit your combo buttons. Hit procs when you can, use your feathers, or save feathers for your next opener, which will only really come into play in later levels. So let's just move quickly past this and talk about the skills we're getting in Stormblood. That's where we'll get a sort of bit of an opener, finally. Level 62, Devilment. On a 2 minute cooldown, this increases both critical and direct hit rate by 20% each for 20 seconds. And this buff also applies to your dance partner. Anytime you or your party is about to dish out a barrage of attacks, Devilment ensures your partner shines above the rest. You want to put this up in every opener, or otherwise using it on cooldown. You'll be using it after your dance, since you want the guaranteed damage boost up first. Higher rates for big damage is great, but still. The only real worry here is using it late into a battle right as stuff is going to die. If the battle is over, you might be better off holding it for the next one just to make sure that one goes smoother. But don't hold it just because you've done a bit of damage already. There's a line to draw, but using it consistently should be a habit to get into. Level 66, Fan Dance 3. This technically comes with an upgrade to Fan Dance 1 and 2. Each of these now has a 50% chance to grant a three-fold Fan Dance proc. These procs are the only way to use Fan Dance 3, similar to your normal combo. It costs no feathers to use and is not a player centered AoE. It is an AoE of 5 yams on your current target. This target will take a hit of 200 potency. 
all enemies within range of that first target will get 100 potency of damage as well. In all possible context, this is a stronger version of both fan dances, all while having only the cost in spending time to weave it between GCDs. This becomes something to worry about if you start trying to save feathers for burst phases. You have to watch for any time you are given a three-fold fan dance. If you fan dance one or two before spending it, you may end up just losing your next proc. This leads to a good amount of weaving on top of what you already could build up. Otherwise, we're just simply using it as soon as possible when we get it. It's just like our main combo procs. Anytime you spend a feather, be ready to use Fan Dance 3 and use it right away. Level 68, Enhanced Enavant. This turns Enavant into a skill with charges. The moment you spend a charge, it begins to recharge even with one stored. So in total, you have a 60 second cooldown for both charges, but can store them for when it is needed. So if you need back-to-back -back dashes for dodging, or speed, or what have you, you can save them up for that moment, or spread them out as needed. This doesn't really allow you to do anything more than you already could, though. Level 70, Technical Step. This is our only job quest locked skill. Do your job quests. Technical Step is a 2 minute cooldown. Starting off, this works exactly the same as Standard Step, but this one has all four dance steps. Activate the dance, do all four dances, then hit the button again for technical finish. Once again, there are two effects. The first is damage, doing 1200 potency to the first target and 300 potency to all targets after the first. The AoE size is 15 yams, just like Standard Step 2. The second effect is a lot bigger than Standard Steps. Technical finish will buff all allies within range for 20 seconds by 5%. This is not just you and your partner this time. By this level, you're not going to be accidentally grabbing extra enemies with AoEs, so you can run into melee, blow up the enemies, and buff up your entire team. And obviously in bosses, you're throwing this out in openers for making everyone else do a bit more damage. Combined with everyone else's buffs and big hits going out, 5% gets multiplied several times and it's worth so much more than it sounds like. We want to use this on cooldown every time it comes up. Which, with these skills, it's time for a real opener, kinda. Dancer has an extremely tiny opener, even at level cap. And this will be half of it. There's almost nothing to go over, but let's go through it. Pre-pull, closed position, standard step, dance dance, Standard finish, technical step, dance, 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 technical finish, devilment, cascade. Same as before, we prep standard finish on the run up to the boss so we can immediately buff ourselves and our partner. But we want our team buffed too, so we immediately transfer into technical step. By this point, the entire party will be finished ramping up and start throwing out all of their big hits, which is why we also immediately weave into devilment. If they're not already there, your partner will be approaching the apex of their opener here and be buffed further. Any crits they get could be thanks to you entirely. But from there, we can't really do much with our opener. We do our normal combo hits, try and get feathers, spend them if we get any, and use our cooldowns when they come back up. Save feathers for reopeners if you can. But with how little there is for Dancer, that's it for an overview. So let's do the karaoke opener. That means I'm going to speak the names of skills as the buttons are hit, so there may be some cutting myself off due to the speed of certain actions in the opener, but otherwise skill names are said the moment the buttons are hit. Pre-pull, closed position, standard step, dance, dance, standard finish, technical step, dance, 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 technical finish, element. Cascade. With that short bit of dancing done, let's get into Shadowbringers and the major additions that brings. Level 72, Flourish. On a 60 second cooldown and only usable inside of combat, this instantly grants you all three of your procs, but two of them slightly different. We get threefold fan dance, which allows for using fan dance three. That's the same. However, we also get Flourishing Symmetry and Flourishing Flow. These are the same as Silken Symmetry and Silken Flow, allowing for you to use the proc'd GCDs. 
but they're different names, so that means you can stack them. Let's do our combos and get both Silk and Buffs. Then hit Flourish and get the Flourishing Buffs. We can now use Reverse Cascade and Fountainfall each twice, or the AoE versions if you wish. The fact these can stack means you can't accidentally overwrite your procs with Flourish. The only way you can overwrite a proc with Flourish is with Fan Dance 3. So just don't weave in a feather when you're using Flourish and you're golden. Weave the Fan Dance 3 at the same time as Flourish even. Hit Flourish on cooldown and use procs as you can. You'll be getting a lot more feathers thanks to this. Level 76, Esprit. Our fan gauge has expanded to now have a traditional gauge attached. This is Esprit and is only generated when under the effects of our dances. Both Standard and Technical Step now grant Esprit when they go out, lasting as long as the damage buffs on the specific allies. On yourself, Esprit is a guaranteed generation of 5 Esprit every time you use a GCD from your main combos, single target and AoE. On your allies it has a... much more theory crafting type of bonus? When your allies cast spells or land weapon skills, there is a chance to gain 10 Esprit. This chance is different for every single job. Well, there's some overlap certainly, but no way to know what your generation chances are without a long time testing it or looking up charts. Its work I'm sure has been done, but I won't bog you down with the deeper details there. Point is, it's a random chance to get Esprit from party members when you dance for them. Even when you use Technical Step, you're not guaranteed any Esprit. Would take astronomical odds to get zero S3, but still technically possible. Point is, you're now going to start to generate a little bit of guaranteed S3 with every attack, with random boosts of S3 during your dances. But what about spending S3? Level 76, Saber Dance. On the GCD, this does an AoE attack onto an enemy. It has a 5 Yom radius, doing 480 points to the initial target, 240 to all enemies after the first. It costs 50 Esprit to use, and the Esprit gauge begins to flash back and forth between yellow and red to signal it is usable. But otherwise, there isn't really anything more complex to it. You can hold on to Saber Dance for a little bit, but don't hold on to it too long that you hit 100 gauge. The longer you sit on 100 gauge, the more likely you're going to lose some gauge to overcapping. Throw out Saber Dance where you can, especially in AoE. Big AoE, long boss fight, etc. You just use it anytime you have the gauge. Level 78, Enhanced Enavant 2. We now have three charges of Enavant, a total 90 second cooldown, 30 seconds per charge. All the same uses apply, but now slightly more. Level 80, Improvisation. On a two minute cooldown, this is a support skill. First off, hitting this button will disable your auto attack automatically. Secondly, if you take any action, movement, turning, attacking, will end improvisation early. And thirdly, all allies within 8 yawns will be granted a 100 potency heal over time. It lasts for 15 seconds, healing every 3 seconds. In total, that's 500 potency. However, the big purpose of this skill is channeling it as hinted at by the fact this skill ends by moving. If you stay still and continue to channel it, the buff will continually refresh until the skill ends. But that's not why we're channeling it. The reason is that channeling the skill will cause you to accumulate stacks of another buff every 3 seconds, up to a maximum of 4. If you channel the skill until time runs out, you lose all of those stacks. But Improvised turns into Improvised Finish. Hitting the button at any point will expand all stacks and give all players inside the area a shield with a percentage of max HP, up to 10%. This shield will last for 30 seconds before falling off. Because of how this skill works, it doesn't get a lot of mid-battle usage, though you can just for the regen, but you'll still lose an auto attack. The place you end up using improvisation most is any time a boss has some form of ultimate attack. You almost never can attack the boss during these events. If it isn't a full-on cutscene, you can plop down improvisation to give a regen and defensive shield for after the ultimate. Bosses can still do mechanics and raid wides immediately after, so giving the healers a little bit of help makes it worth it. Plus, what else are you gonna do? Stand there watching the cutscene while your party tries to keep everyone alive? Which brings us to our next opener. All we need to do is simply add in Flourish. But this does potentially give us a use of Saber Dance. There is no guarantee, so it might be Saber Dance, but it could be Fountain Fall instead. Pre-pull, close position, standard step, dance dance, standard finish, 
Technical step. Dance, 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 dance. Technical finish. Devilment. Cascade. Flourish. Fan Dance 3. Fountain. Save a dance if available, otherwise, Fountainfall. It's this one at the end. There could have been enough time to get Saber Dance, but also have a very high chance of not having Saber Dance here. If you do not have enough Esprit for Saber Dance, we Fountainfall because it is our strongest possible attack. We'll work through our procs or using Saber Dance the moment we can. We could have two of each proc after all, since we used our base combo too. You might wonder why we don't use the proc before Fountain. Well, it's to try and give muscle memory for what comes at 90. We're going to replace the main combo in a moment, but these will prepare us for the coming rotation and learning how to deal with it when we have tons of procs. Not going to karaoke this one since it's not that much added even if there is a bit of weave there. We'll hear it at level 90 when we have our proper final opener in Endwalker. Level 82, Enhanced Technical Finish and Telana. This is a further action on top of Technical Finish. Technical Finish grants us Flourishing Finish for 30 seconds, turning it into Tilana. Tilana is a 1.5 second global cooldown. This has a 15 yarm range like both of your dances. It does a 360 potency hit to the first enemy and 180 potency to all enemies after the first. Further, it grants you and your ally Standard Finish and Esprit for 60 seconds, acting like a Standard Step buff. We'll be opening with Standard Step, so this is a refresh to our timers at best. If we want to go that far, apparently at the high end we don't want to use Standard Step on cooldown or something like that, and this would probably help with that, but I don't know the details on that really. But otherwise, this is just something extra you want to use after Technical Step. You can hold onto it a little bit thanks to that 30 second timer, but usually it gets used sooner than later. It's more damage. Level 84, Enhanced Esprit. Our GCD proc skills have been boosted. Reverse Cascade, Fountainfall, Rising Windmill, and Blood Shower all give 10 Esprit when used under the Esprit buff. This speeds up how many Saber Dances we get, but doesn't really change how we play at all, and it's a very tiny buff. Level 86, Enhanced Flourish and Fan Dance 4. Upon using Flourish, we are now granted 4 Fold Fan Dance for 30 seconds. This is the only way for us to use Fan Dance 4, which makes it essentially Flourish's version of Tilana, but a bit different. This is a Konal AoE with a massive 15 yarm range. This is as big as your dances, but for a cone, it is huge. This does 300 potency to the first enemy and 150 potency to all enemies beyond the first. Unlike Tilana, this is an OGCD like your other fan dances, so you can weave this at will. If you're not flooded with feathers and trying to make use of those so you don't overcap, throw out Fan Dance 4 when you get it. If you need to do some management of feathers, you have time to throw it out in a little bit. Level 88, Enhanced Shield Samba. Shield Samba's cooldown is dropped 30 seconds to a shorter 90 seconds. Mechanics and raid-wide damage happen a lot in Endgame, and you can use this often to block some of it for your healers. Or if just dungeons, spam it in trash pools more than you already were. Level 90, Enhanced Devilment and Starfall Dance. Devilment joins the crew now and has a proc of its own. Devilment will grant Flourishing Starfall for 20 seconds. This allows us to use Starfall Dance, which is a 25 yom line AoE in the direction of your current target. This does 600 potency to the first target and 150 potency to all targets after the first. This seems nothing special at first, but the fact that it will always be a critical direct hit makes it a lot stronger, consistently so. While you can't get lucky crits like with other skills, being guaranteed the direct crit means this is more functionally an over 1,000 potency hit with no chance to crit. Same as all our other procs, we simply want to use these whenever they are available, regardless of single target or AoE. That's the theme of Endwalker for dancers, AoE proc skills that have strong first target potencies, and really that's all of Dancer. But that leads us back into our final opener. All these new skills, they're big hits that we want to shove into the opener when all our buffs are up. They're all worth a spot, and we even prepared room for them as we leveled. Pre-pull, close position, standard step, dance dance, standard finish, technical step, dance, 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 technical finish, devilment, starfall dance, flourish, fan dance three, 
Tilana, Fan Dance 4, Saber Dance if available, otherwise Fountainfall, Feather Procs if available, Standard Step, Dance, Dance, Standard Finish, Reverse Cascade. I want to mention the pre-pull dance once again. In ideal, top raid level environments, you're gonna get a 15 second countdown timer. This is when you start the dance. You end it on pull. As a result, you cannot do this standard step here at the end without that 15 second pre-pull dance. You'll have to go back to your main procs instead and push back the standard step which will still have a reverse cascade proc available to use. If you haven't used Saber Dance or were unable to here, that fits in too. We throw out Starfall Dance first because ideally, all buffs are up at this point. Any remaining buffs that could go out will be crit based buffs, and Starfall is an auto crit anyway. The flourish into Fan Dance 3 is the same as before, using the proc ASAP, but instead of the normal GCD, we can use Telana, our next biggest hit. We also have a free weaving slot for Fan Dance 4 from Flourish, so use it here. Then once again we come to Saber Dance. If we have Saber Dance available, hit it. If not, we use Fountainfall because it is our hardest hitting remaining skill. If, and only if we use Fountainfall, and only if we got a feather, we immediately use it. If that feather procs Fan Dance 3, we use that too. Normally I try to avoid talking about if situations, but this is a major exception. Dancer is just too proc based to not go over if situations. Then as we went over earlier, we have the second standard step only if you got to do the pre-pull dance properly, 15 seconds before pull, otherwise skip to the reverse cascade. Then from here on out it's using your main combo, generating procs, using your procs, and managing your feathers if you get any for saving them for reopener windows, and also your esprit gauge. Otherwise, you just keep throwing them out. That really is all there is to it, too. Generate procs, use them, and all your cooldowns you use the moment they come off a cooldown. Dancer really is just low stakes when it comes to understanding a rotation. There's plenty to learn at the high end, but a basic go over? I can't say much more than just use your procs as you get them. So let's sing our song of hope to dance on the wind with our final karaoke opener. Free pull, close position. Standard step, dance, dance, skipping ahead, standard finish, technical step, dance, 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 technical finish, devilment, starfall dance, flourish, fan dance 3, Talana, fan dance 4, saber dance, or fountainfall, feathers if available, standard step, dance, dance, standard finish, reverse cascade. This finishes it off. Short, sweet, to the point, and very supportive of the team. But we all know you're just going to sit in Limsa with the honeybee dance going. Thank you for watching this Dance Day 1 to 90 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I am always seeking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide, even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators. Or even go follow my Patreon. Have fun idiot adventures across Eorzea and may the power of Anna Nidhogsley waste to your enemies.